Good morning, everybody. We are back again with A Child's History of the World. Uh, we are on chapter 76, which is called Upside Down. Oh my goodness. Legit. Yeah. All right. Measles and mumps are very catching. So are revolutions. Just a little later than the revolution of the 13 colonies, the people in France had a revolution too. They saw how successful the Americans had been in fighting against the King of England. Wait, Mom, hmm. it, it is upside down. I know, that's the point. And so they rebelled against their own king and queen in France. This was called the French Revolution. The reason the people, the French people, rebelled against their king was that they had very little. And both the king and his royal family and nobles seemed to have everything. Both the Americans and the French rebelled against paying taxes. What the heck? Well, people don't want to pay taxes when they don't know why or what it's for. <laughs> Although the English taxes were not very high, the Americans thought them unjust. The French taxes, however, not only were unjust, Mom. but they took almost everything from the people. What? How do they do that? What do you mean? Steal. When well, when it's not asleep. Yes, but you also have a situation where if you didn't pay your taxes, there were pretty harsh punishments. Hmm. You know, like punishments of a spanking if you don't get up while I'm reading. Goofy. <laughs> I am goofy. Okay. I, Shh. I have already told you how bad things were under Louis the Fourteenth, and they got worse until the people could stand it no longer. At this time, the king of France was Louis the Fourteenth, and his wife was named Marie Antoinette. You'll hear a lot about her. Okay, the people were so poor that they hardly had anything to eat except a very coarse and bad tasting kind of bread called black bread. That doesn't sound very delicious. No. No. They were compelled to pay the king and the nobles money so the king and nobles could live in fine style and have parties. And they had to do all sorts of work for nothing or next to nothing. If anyone complained, oh, here, so you were asking about why they had they were forced to pay or what would happen if they didn't? If anyone complained, he was put in a great prison in Paris called the Bastille I, I and left I... there to die. So they put you in prison and just leave you. I thought, I thought they would, like, do something, like, they, they would, like... Um, Behead them? Yeah. They probably did that, too. In spite of the fact that all the people were so terribly poor, the king and queen and their friends lived in luxury and extravagance with everything in the world they wanted, all paid for by the poor people. Neither the king nor his wife that was really is wicked. rude. Well, it is rude, yes. So the king and his wife, neither, let's try that again, Neither the king nor his wife was really wicked. They were simply young and thoughtless. They meant well, but like a great many well-meaning people, they lacked common sense and did not know how others lived. They didn't seem to understand that people could be poor, for they had so much themselves. Marie Antoinette was told that her subjects had no bread to eat. Let them eat cake she said. So just not having any clue about, yes, not having any clue about how these people lived, not having any understanding that they had no money for food because being poor wasn't something that they dealt with. To fight the wrongs of the people, a body of many of the best men from all France gathered together and calling themselves the National Assembly, tried to work out some plan to do away with all the justice the people had suffered. Excuse She's me. tired. No, I'm not tired. I just am not breathing enough while I write, read. They wanted to make everyone feel free and equal and give everybody a say in the government. Their slogan was Liberté, Egalité, 
fraternity, which means in English, liberty, equality, and brotherhood. Okay, I need you to sit up. Mom, where are you? I'm right here. Or I'm sitting at the table. The poor had become so furiously angry at the way they had been treated by the rich that they would stand things no longer. And a wild and angry mob of them attacked the old prison of the Bastille. They battered down the walls and freed the prisoners and killed the guards of the Bastille simply because they were servants of the king. Then they cut off the heads of the guards and stuck them on poles and carried them aloft, paraded throughout the streets of Paris. There were only seven prisoners in the old jail, so that freeing them didn't matter much. But this attack was to show the, that the people would no longer allow the king to imprison them. The Bastille was stormed on July 14th, 1789. This was the beginning of what is called the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. And this day is celebrated. Mom, Mom. What? Peabody and Sherman. Yes, I know. Peabody and Sherman. We, we saw in Peabody and Sherman about the French Revolution. Yeah. This was the beginning of what is called the French Revolution. And this day is celebrated in France almost the same way that our 4th of July is. For it was the French Declaration of Independence against their king. What? Life. Stop. Oh. Lafayette, who was now back in France, the same Lafayette who had helped the Americans fight their king, sent the key of the Bastille over to George Washington as a souvenir that his own country had now overthrown its king and declared its independence. The king and queen were living in the beautiful palace of Versailles, the palace that Louis XIV had built. Many of the king's nobles, when they heard what was taking place in Paris, became frightened and, deserting their king and queen, took to their heels and left the country. They knew pretty well what was going to happen, and they didn't wait to see. Meanwhile, the National Assembly drew up what was called a Declaration of Rights of Men, which was something like our Declaration of Independence. It said that all men were born free and equal, that the people should make the laws and that the laws should be the same for all. Soon after the <laughs> tongue tire, soon after the Declaration of Rights had been made, the angry mob from Paris, ragged and wild looking, carrying sticks and stones and crying bread, bread, marched the 13 miles. Oh, excuse me. To Versailles, where Louis and Marie Antoinette were still living. Up the beautiful grand staircase of the palace they rushed. The few guards remaining around the king were unable to hold them back. They captured the king and queen and took them prisoners and took them prisoners to Paris. There they kept Louis and Marie Antoinette prisoner. Once the king and queen tried to escape, disguised, but were caught before they could get out of the country and they were brought back. Then it was that, whoa, let's try that again. Then it was that the National Assembly drew up a constitution, a set of rules by which the country should be governed justly. Um, Lily, come back over here. What is in your mouth? That doesn't belong in your mouth. You need to sit down and listen, please. This is the agreed to, this the king agreed to and signed. That still wasn't enough. The people wanted no king at all to rule over them. So about a year later, they started a real republic like our own and the king was sentenced to death. A Frenchman had invented a kind of machine with a big knife for chopping off heads. Do you remember what that was called? A de-header. A de-header. It was called a guillotine. It's called a de-header. <sighs> anyway, the king was taken to the guillotine and his head was cut off. But the people did not settle down quiet and content when they had gotten rid of their king. 
they were afraid that those who fear, who were in favor of the king might start another kingdom. The people chose red, white, and blue as their colors and the Marseille as their national song. Actually, I'm sorry. I didn't say that correctly. Marseille as their national song. And everywhere they marched, they carried the tricolor as they called the three colored flag. And they marched, as they marched, they sang the Marseillaise. They began what is called the Reign of Terror. And that is a tale of blood. A man named Robespierre and two of his friends were leaders in the Reign of Terror. Anyone whom the people suspected of being in favor of the king, they caught and beheaded. The queen was one of the first to have her head cut off. If ever, if anyone even whispered that there was a man or a woman or child who was in favor of the king, that man, woman, or child was rushed to the guillotine. If anyone hated another and wished to get rid of him, all he had to do was to point him out as in favor of the king and off he would be taken to the guillotine. No one was sure of his life for a day. He knew, he never knew what moment some personal enemy might accuse him. Hundreds, then thousands of suspected people were beheaded and a special sewer had to be built to carry off the blood. That's a whole lot of killing going on, good Lord. Mm -hmm. The guillotine, fast as it was, was too slow for the terrorists it could cut off but one head at a time. And so prisoners were lined up and shot down with cannon. Holy moly. With cannon? Cannons, yes. People seem to have gone wild, crazy mad. Wait, Mom. Cannon or yes. cannons? Like cannons. A cannon. Like a cannon blast to kill people. A lot of people. They insulted Christ and the Christian religion. They put a woman called the Goddess of Reason on the altar of the beautiful church of Notre Dame and worshiped her. They pulled down statues and pictures of Christ and the Virgin Mary. In their place, they put up statues and pictures of their own leaders. The guillotine was put in place of the cross. They did away with Sundays. They made a week 10 days long and every seventh day, they made a holiday instead of Sunday. They stopped counting time from Christ's birth because they didn't want anything that had to do with Christ. Mom. What? A lot of people. Dang. Yes, it was a lot of people they killed. It's like everybody in France went crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try that again. They stopped counting time from Christ's birth because they didn't want anything that had to do with Christ. And they began to call the year when the Republic was started in 1792, year one, excuse me. But Robespierre wished to rule alone. Imagine that. And he plotted against his two friends. One of these he had beheaded and the other was killed in a bathtub by a girl named Charlotte Corday who was in a rage at what he had done. So Robespierre was left alone to rule. At last the people in fear of this man who was such a monstrous and inhumane tyrant rose up against him. When he found that he too was to be put to death, he tried to commit suicide. But before he could do so, he was caught and taken to the guillotine. And he where he went to the same death to which he had sent countless others. And the reign of terror ended. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Ta-ta for now.